Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're just going to be doing a chill draw and chat with me in my sketchbook. So I did these like little sketches the other day with just a coloring pencil and I wanted to be drawing with markers today so I'm gonna be doing just the line art with some colored pencils first and I'm using my Artix colored pencil set that I've been obsessed with recently and I'm just getting out some like a red dark pencil and a dark blue pencil to do the line art on some of these because as you guys know I like to do the line art in pencil first. So yeah, sharpened pencils, ready to go. And yeah, I did these like little sketches the other day because um, I haven't really had much time to just draw for myself recently. So this video was very, very lovely because I just got to sit down all day and draw and enjoy it. It was really lovely. So I just went in with a red pencil here and did the, the line art based on the sketch that I did with like a light colored pencil. I wanted to do like a full page illustration with like a few different like illustration bits here and there and just kind of have a, a cute little composition kind of making it look like a little sticker sheet almost. I might actually turn it into some stickers some of these because they ended up looking so cute. So after I was done with the line art, I got out my markers, the star of the show for today, and I'm using my Arteza Everblend markers as per usual. They're my absolute favorites right now. And I've got my little swatch sheet at the back of my marker case that I always use when I'm using markers. And I just started going in adding some colors. I didn't really have much of a plan for what I was going to do color wise. I just knew I wanted to make something with a lot of like greens and blues and make the whole page kind of cohesive. So that was the only real plan that I had when picking out colors. So I started by adding in this sort of like teal dark blue to the background of this first one and filling out all the flat layers first with some different shades of green and also her skin color and things like that. And I was really enjoying myself. I hadn't drawn with markers in a while and I was really missing it. I, a lot of people that I, a lot of artists that I follow right now on Instagram, you know, posting reels and stuff of their like processes with drawing with markers. And every time I watch one, I'm like, oh God, I really, <laughs> really miss just sitting down and messing around with markers. So I thought I'd take a full like afternoon and just do that myself and it was really really nice yeah i've been really busy with a lot of things like with work and life things so i've been really really busy and not having a lot of time to just sit down and draw for myself and even when i do it's usually uh, just on my ipad in bed because i'm like too tired and when you've worked all day at your desk in the studio you don't really want to be sitting at your desk again like in the like in your free time <laughs> anymore you just kind of want to lie in bed or something so yeah it was why this video was so nice to do because it was still like I was still technically working because I was doing this for YouTube but it was like a chill time and it really sort of re-sparked my creativity and I felt really like inspired to draw again it was just yeah Sometimes you just need to take some time for yourself and <laughs> draw whatever the heck you want, so. Yeah, I was just adding in like the little leaf base colors. I added a little bit of a gradient to some of them. So I added like a lighter color first and then added the darker color at the bottom and then went back in with that light color to blend those two colors together and create a nice gradient. And I wanted to add a little bit more depth to some of the leaves. So I added different shades of green and it just kind of made some of them look like they were in shadow and some of them were like, you know, a little bit, a little bit darker than the others. And it just makes them look a lot more fun. So yeah, then I started going in and adding like shadows. Um, so picking out a, sl a slightly darker color than my flat colors and adding in all the shadows and and the, and the highlights and then going back in with the base color that I originally used to blend all the shadows out. 
And that's usually my process with markers, just kind of keep adding darker and darker layers and then using the lighter color to blend all those edges together. And it creates sort of like a nice seamless blend between them, which is what we want. I also, as you saw earlier, I added like a little strip of paper to that other page next to it. And it was mostly so I didn't like rub the graphite with my hand from that page and like got it everywhere on this page. But I just kind of decided to also use it as my swatch sheet. So I just put down all the colors that I was using as I was using them so that I had like a log of all the colors that I used. And it always looks really pretty at the end as well to see like your color palette in this format. I, I always really enjoy doing that. Like my friend, I'm a wonder Tina that you guys might follow. And, and if you don't like, you really should check out her channel. Uh, she always does that when she paints with gouache and markers and things. She always does like a little swatch page like this with um, all the colors she's used in like little circles. And I think it looks absolutely adorable at the end. <laughs> so yeah, I've, um, I've been getting into the habit of doing that as well whenever I draw. So once I was happy with like most of the shadows that I'd done, I went back in with my uh, colored pencils and started adding some more shadows and some cross hatching just to kind of mix and match some texture. It's like my favorite thing when um, painting or drawing with markers or paints or anything. I like to go back on top of them with pencils and adding like this pencil texture. It looks so cool and I just love mixing mediums and mixing textures so yeah I just started adding in some details with my sharp pencil, adding some darker shadows that I wanted to, to have a little bit more of a like a cross hatchy look to them and then I added some details to the leaves around her with a dark green pencil and also going over some of the the line art with the dark green pencil as well. And uh, yeah, at the end I wanted to add a little bit more contrast to the face because obviously I added a lot more contrast to the leaves and stuff with the dark green pencil. So then I went in with a dark blue and added some of the like, what, what I would usually put down as black or like the really high points of contrast. I've been playing around with um, not using black when using like traditional mediums recently. I just think using like a dark blue or a dark purple makes it really, really interesting and just kind of adds like more purposeful. It looks like it's like more purposeful color picking. I don't know. It makes it look like I <laughs> understand color theory a lot more, but true, like truly, I just think it looks nicer to add like a, a color than just a pure black when adding like the darkest, darkest shadows. And I've been really enjoying the look of it. So I went in with this like dark blue pencil and added in the highest points of like shadows in her hair and on her face and things like that. And yeah, I just think it looks a lot more fun than um, just having it in black. When I was in high school, my art teacher used to always tell me like to never like use black paint and stuff when we were doing acrylic paintings and stuff because she said that it like looked dirty and stuff. I'm like, she was, <laughs> the way she explained it made me think that I was like, I don't know, that doesn't, I, I don't understand that very well. But now that I've like, experiment a lot more in my life with like different mediums I kind of understand a little bit of what she was saying but more so in the, in the sense that I just think it looks more interesting to use like a dark a dark colored pencil than just using pure black yeah when I'm painting I'll still use like black to darken things I just don't and like she would always tell us to like mix our own black with colors but it never ended up looking like black and it was like a really frustrating time for me in art class because I could never get things to look past a certain point of darkness. So I could never like get the, the, the contrast that I wanted in my paintings because she just wouldn't let us use black. It was a whole thing. So... <laughs> 
Then I went in with my um, Artix markers, uh, the acrylic paint markers, and I really love going in with the white marker at the end of um, like any drawing or painting and just adding in like the highest points of, um, of highlights. So like the really, really shiny parts of her face. And sometimes while they're still wet, I like to like rub them with my finger just to kind of like blend them a little bit. Um, and I think it looks really cute. So I added some like little streaks of highlight to her hair, her eyes and like the tip of her nose and her lips and stuff. And this step always like really makes it, anything look really, really finished and polished. So it's like my favorite step when working with markers and traditional mediums. It just really makes the highlights pop. And sometimes I go a little bit overboard with it, but it's really, really fun. <laughs> And th yeah, then I just kind of started adding the flats to that other portrait on the side. I just kind of wanted to make like a really smiley little like cute girl and she's got like this curly hair and these braids like that just go over her face. And yeah, I wanted to experiment with something like a face that was a little bit more expressive. So that's what I did with this little corner here. And I just started uh, having a lot of fun just kind of painting in her curly hair it's like my favorite thing in the world is like drawing curly like afros like this because it's just fun to draw all these little ringlets and these everblend markers are really good for this kind of stuff because the the tip is really really flexible so you can get really really thin strokes with them and you can create all these kinds of thin ringlets so they're my favorite marker brush nibs that I've used in, in a while, just because the flexibility of the, the nib is really, really versatile. Yeah, this isn't a review for my Ribbon markers. I've done that already on the channel, but I just, again, every time I use them, I'm reminded of how fun they are to, to draw with, so. Yeah, and then I just started adding in some shadows on top of the uh, base colors that I'd done. So as I said, I go in with like a darker marker to the color that I used for the base color and then just add in details with a darker color and then blend it out if I feel like blending it out. And then because I wanted to keep in with the sort of green-ish color aesthetic, I added a little choker to her like set of necklaces and I used like a dark green for that. And then I added some little freckles to her face with a colored pencil to make them sort of like fadey, so they actually look a little bit more like freckles. And I took that opportunity to also go in and add some shadows with my colored pencils and kind of color the line layer a little bit. Sometimes it gets a little um, hidden away when I use dark colors over the colored pencil, so I need to go over the line art again. And she was looking so adorable, like this little smile that she was doing, I, and I just thought it was so, so cute. Um, I was really happy with the way that the face came out because it was a, already at a bit of an angle, and she was, you know, had, doing like a scrunched up smile. So, yeah, I was happy that it actually looked okay and it didn't end up looking weird because <laughs> sometimes when I try to draw faces with like expressive faces or expressions they just kind of end up looking a little weird. So then I went in with a yellow Artix acrylic marker and added some little like gold beads to the braids at the front of her head and just kind of breaking up the darkness of the hair a little bit and sort of breaking up the uh, the braids to the the rest of her curly hair and i think it did a good job of breaking that those shapes up and i also darkened the line art around the braids a little bit to make them stand out a bit more and darkening the bits of the hair that were like a lot more in shadow and then using my trusty acrylic markers again, I went in with the white marker and added all the like necklaces around her neck. 
and you can really see like how opaque they are in in these moments because I literally just went over them one time and they were just super opaque. I'm really really obsessed with these acrylic markers at the moment, these paint markers that I literally use them for everything, even for my like dioramas and my miniatures. If there's like an edge or something that like a bit of wood that needs painting, like I'll if I'll just go in with an acrylic marker and it's just it's super opaque and it dries really fast. They're just very, very handy. <laughs> so um, I also did a video um, a few months ago reviewing them if you are interested in hearing a little bit more about them, but I do actually use them a lot. Even in my bullet journal, I use them a lot. They're very, very fun. So yeah, it was a really cute, quick little portrait that I did over there at the top and then I went right into the next one which was this little vase if you guys have been following me on Instagram and stuff you'll see that I've been really into drawing like flower bouquets and like flower illustrations in, in vases and stuff and like jars and things I've I got really got into them a few months back because I found them really relaxing to just draw a lot of like flowers and petals and things and yeah I really got into it recently and started doing a lot of stickers of them as well for the shop and stuff and I got really really into drawing flowers so I thought I'd do a really nice little vase of flowers down here in more of like a purpley blue color palette and sort of like they've been put into like an old perfume bottle. And it was also a nice challenge to find out how to render gl a glass bottle or a glass jar with markers. It was a fun little challenge here. So yeah, I, I added like a bit more of a lavender background down here so that there was more of like a colder tone to the to this little corner of the page. And I added all the, the greens to the leaves, all the flat colors, and then went in with a darker green to add some shadows to the, the leaves that were more in the background and things like that. And um, yeah, I saw these flowers that I drew here. I saw them on Pinterest. I'm not actually sure what kind of flowers they are. So if you do know, let me know in the comments. But I just thought they were really pretty and I loved the purple color on them and like the gradient. So I just thought I'd draw them. Yeah, if you do know what flowers they are, please let me know because I'd love to draw more of them. Yeah, and then I just started adding some little like willy-nilly details to the inside of the jar, hoping to God that they made sense <laughs> with like the glass jar. I find that with like rendering glass, you can kind of get away with just drawing a bunch of random shapes and omitting details and stuff and it kind of, it kind of works. So I was really just like making things up as I went and it ended up looking okay as long as you just like leave enough empty areas or never enough white areas to look like reflections and stuff I think you can get away with it so I just kept adding shadows to the glass jar and making things up a little bit and then I went in with my dark blue pencil to go over the line art again just to really make those lines pop. Yeah the dark blue pencil like really complemented the like the color palette of this little illustration so it all ended up looking really pretty. I also added in some like details to the leaves and stuff to make them look a little bit more textured and to the flowers as well, adding a little bit more of a, a contrast and shadows to them as well. And then I actually went in with that same yellow acrylic marker from Artix to some of the leaves and added a little bit of a, a yellowing gradient to the tips of them because I felt like the leaves were a bit flat they were all like the same shade of green and I wanted to add a little bit of a, a gradient to them so I kind of hatched in some of this acrylic paint marker and then with my finger I like dabbed it to sort of create a, a little soft gradient and it as you can see, like it blends them in really nicely. Um, so I literally just like tap it with my finger and it kind of creates this nice seamless blend. So <laughs> that's kind of how I'll use these markers to blend in with whatever medium I'm using underneath them. 
and then I went in with my white marker to add in the really like high points of contrast and the reflections to the glass jar, adding some little like really cool highlights to the flowers and I was really happy with how that turned out actually. It was I think the first time I've done a like sort of flower illustration like this in markers and I was scared I wasn't going to be able to get like all the little tiny details that I usually do when I do them digitally but I was really happy with how it turned out. And then I went over to the last illustration here, which is just this cute pair of scissors that I wanted them kind of to look like really ornate, like garden shears or like like small flower uh, arrangement shears. And I wanted them to be in gold just so I could like render them out in this gold color. And I think it would really tie in the blue from that bottom right illustration and the greens from the beginning. I went in with a light yellow first and then just kept adding like darker oranges and browns as shadows to create this sort of gold look to them. And then finally, like the most important part of making something look gold is adding like these really shiny white like highlights to make it look really shiny and gold. and and polished as well. So I went in with my Artix marker to add in those white details. And yeah, I accidentally erased some of the line art from this illustration earlier, so I had to go back in with a brown pencil to add those details back in. And yeah, finally, I just added some little sparkles in the same color of the background from that first illustration to fill in some of the gaps and make it look like a full page illustration and kind of like make everything really cohesive. And that was pretty much it. I just kind of went in with some pencils in some of the bits that I thought were missing some contrast because sometimes I'll just like take a step back at the end and see some things that are missing. So I was just adding some like cross-hatching to the background of this flowers illustration just to make the background a little bit more interesting <laughs> and also like break apart the, uh, the glass jar from the background. And that was it. I was really, really happy with how these illustrations came out. I think they look so, so cute and it ended up looking sort of like a sticker sheet. I might actually turn some of these into stickers and put them on the shop at some point because they, they're so cute. I might as well. And they came out super, super colorful. I was really needing something super bright and colorful to work on to really kickstart my creativity again. So I'm happy that these really did, just really did the job. And yeah, here are some close-ups. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you really if you enjoyed this video and to see more of, of these kinds of videos and check out my Patreon. My shop is currently closed because I'm prepping for cons, but it will be open at some point soon. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye! <laughs>